Hi, we're set. Come on over. Come here, quick, quick, quick. What? Perfect timing. We are live. We oh are doing gosh. this right now. Look at this. Yeah, it's happening. This is cool. We're going to give an update to the students about big things happening. Awesome. Okay. I love kids. Uh, I'm Dr. Chagrin. And I am Mrs. Light. We're your two favorite associate principals, and we're going to give you a quick update on all things Knights Block, lunch, arc, cell phones. Cell phones. We're going to talk about them. So fun. So your Knights Block teachers and your teachers have a really good background of this information as well. So if you have questions that we don't cover, they are ready to be able to answer them. And I'm sure that we may have some follow-up communication just to help make sure everyone's on the same page. Yeah, and the one thing that we really want to stress to you guys is that, yes, it's going to feel like, oh my gosh, they're putting all these rules in place, right? And here's the thing. We just want structure, and we need structure. You need structure, just like if you've ever had a, a night where you just – you know, slept all night. We're on. Here we go. Yeah. We're okay, ready. let's go. We're ready. Here we we go. need structure is what we're talking about. Here we go. Uh, so the first thing with Knights Block. So Knights Block in the past, if you're a sophomore, junior, senior, you could kind of wander the halls. This year, we're going to be implementing a homeroom. So for the first 10 to 15 minutes of every Knights Block period, you need to report to Knights Block for the start of homeroom. Uh, you're going to learn about a night's pass on a couple slides that if you qualify for a night's pass after that first 15 minutes, you're going to have access to open campus and off campus. But night's block is changing to make sure that we have a time as the North community to come together and review announcements, to talk about big programming, things like homecoming, yeah. announcements. It's a Anything, chance. And also just to kind of yeah. meet an adult that, you know, you're going to connect with. What if I have first or fifth? Night's block. That's an excellent question. Yeah. So if you have first or fifth, you need to make sure that at the start of school, everyone's in night's block to learn these things. But once you qualify for a night's pass, you would come during the last 20 minutes of those classes for homeroom. So first and fifth, eventually the homeroom portion will be during the last 20 minutes, but that's only if you qualify for a night's pass. If I don't qualify for a night's pass, you need to make sure that you're there at the start of class. If you do not go to night's block, you will be marked truant this year. And if you are marked truant, you don't get a night's pass. Not good. Not good. Uh, so let's talk about night's pass for a second. So if you meet certain criteria, you can apply to get a night's pass. First, you need to make sure you have all of your grades above a 70%. If you are a current sophomore, junior, senior, you're going to be able to apply starting tomorrow. And you're going to be able to use your historical grades from the end of second semester. Um, again, let's talk about attendance. You are not going to have any truancies or unexcused absences. Um, students with two or more tardies, so being late to class um, in one class period, are ineligible also for nights pass. And then behavior, you need to make sure that you are following the rules of the school. No issues with the student handbook as followed up with the dean's office. So hopefully a non-issue. So as long as you're getting good grades, 70% or above, you're coming to class, you know, if truancies or tardies, and that you're following the expectations of what it means to be a knight, you'll qualify for a knight's pass. And also, you will need your knight's pass if you are going to enter the cool space called the hub. So you will either need a pass from an academic teacher or your knight's pass also to get into the hub. So once you qualify for a knight's pass, it's going to look like this. It's going to be a bright yellow ID that goes with your other ID. So during night's block, after that first 15 minutes, as long as you have this with you and you're wearing it, you'll be able to leave and access certain parts of the building, which we'll talk about now. So there's a couple benefits to having a night's pass. Uh, first is you have access to open campus. Uh, so you can sit on the soft furniture, you can go to the hub, as long as you're wearing that ID and it's, you have that yellow pass showing. You can also access off campus if you're a sophomore through senior with parent permission. And then during lunch, you'll be able to access the hub. If you don't have a night's pass, you cannot access the hub or arc without a teacher pass. The cool thing about this is that we are going to actually do um, a few times during the semester um, a, a special event or some type of gift, whether it's a gift card, could be, you know, donuts and chocolate milk or something delivered, a cookie um, for students who have earned and maintained their night's pass. So here's how to apply. You're going to get an email link that's kind of a, a form that you fill out that clarifies that you've met these expectations. 
you're going to be able to apply three different times during the semester, starting in August, again in September, and then again in November. You're going to see all these details in an email to you that clearly explains it to you. But essentially, three times this semester, you'll get the chance to apply. Now, we're getting the question that, say you qualified in August and you received a Knights Pass, do you need to reapply in September? The answer is no, unless you lost your Knights Pass. So if you had your Knights Pass removed because of grades or attendance or behavior, then you would have to reapply. But if you have a Knights Pass that is in good standing, it will be reissued providing your grades and everything's been checked. Okay, so I have another question, Dr. Okay. Shagram. So I got a 64% in math, but I got it up to a 79 the next week. Do I get my Knights Pass back that day? No, ah. you won't get your Knights Pass back until the next application period. Okay, fair. So, and if you've had an attendance issue, you may have to wait an entire cycle because you have to have 30 days of good attendance and no tardies and no behavior issues. Okay. So you're going to see, again, all of this in an email to you with instructions, and your teacher can go over some of the details as well. So Knights Block will have certain days during the semester where attendance is required because we're doing unique programming. So August 16th and 17th, the first two days of school, September 21st and 22nd, and November 2nd and 3rd. So on these days, there are also reapplication phases and programming days. Okay, great. So you'll be hearing a lot of different things that we will be doing during that time. And it could be, we're not going to take up, I'm guessing, not the entire hour. Um, the net whole 90 minutes, but it, it will be a lot longer um, just for those three required dates. <laughs> uh, okay, lunch. lunch. All right, so lunch, um, again, is your time. Um, and again, we have a new uh, food service provider this year, Quest, our new vendor. Um, they're going to have better quality food and better options. Um, so we are also only having food in certain areas of the um, building. So basically, if you think about the cafeteria, anything from the cafeteria on, meaning the cafeteria, there's a room called B162 there. And then also we have a new area for outside, if weather permitting, call, we're calling it the front yard. So that's right outside of B162. There'll be tables and chairs out there that you can um, use. Please make sure, I'm going to tell you right now, you have to throw away your garbage. Um, throw away your garbage, clean up your area. Um, and that goes in the cafeteria as well as B162. So that's where the eating will take place. There will be no eating in the hallways. There will be no eating down by athletics. There will be no eating up on the second or third floors. Yep, so just simply no food in the hallways. Um, and again, you can't access the hub without that night's pass as well. So you want to make sure that you try to earn that. Um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, again, if you have applied for off-campus, um, please make sure that you are also scanning out every single day, and the only area that you can leave is outside of B162. And if you're leaving, do you have to leave your ID this year? Yes, okay. we do have to leave our IDs. So we're going to create, once we have um, the first couple of days of school, we're going to figure out whether it's on a table, but our hall monitors... Um, and deans will all be down there for this week, and we will be helping you guys. So you'll leave your ID, and you will also be picking it up when you return to back to school. So the ARC, you'll see uh, the ARC is being launched again for math and English. Same room, 108. You can stop by any time to get support if you have a night's pass. Otherwise, you need a pass from your teacher or a pass from your night's block teacher. Ooh, phones. Ooh, phones. We love phones. Um, so this year we're going to be resetting the policy to make sure that our classrooms are focused um, on really creating positive and focused learning. Um, when students enter the classroom, you are going to be putting your phones, everybody has the exact same looking type caddy, uh, clear caddy um, that will be somewhere probably in the front of the classroom. Um, you know, we really need to get back to what school is about, and that's learning. Now, again, your teachers are going to have some conversation with each one of you about what their expectation is in their classroom. Um, so just make sure that, you know, we don't want this to become a power struggle. We don't want to become this an, an issue at all. Um, just know that, you know, we're not here to look through your phones. We're not here to do any of that. We're here to make sure that we are creating um, a positive learning environment and phones are not happening during learning time.
Yeah, so when you walk into class, uh, it should be expected that you put your phone in the caddy or it's completely away. Um, if it's out, you will potentially have to see a dean regarding it. So please make sure when you walk in, put your phone right up in the front and get right focused on learning. Uh, the other piece is if you're in the hallway for any reason, for a bathroom pass or anything like that, the phone has to be inside the caddy up at the front of the room. Uh, this is the same policy you're going to see in every classroom. And again, it's just designed to make sure that we have a focused learning environment. That's right. All right, I think that's it. I think, that's I think it. those are our slides yep. for this year. So, Knights, we hope you have a great year. Get engaged, take care of each other, and have some fun this year. Yes, awesome. Have a great day.